It's a life or death question with shark attacks seemingly on the rise. How do we keep swimmers and surfers safe? Many of the world's leading experts are in Sydney for a special summit to come up with an answer. We could describe the strategy simply in three major components. The first component would be surveillance, deterrence and detection. The second strategy is a science research, how do we understand more about the sharks? And the third thing is education and community awareness. really interesting how much fear we have from sharks and yet it's the shark that should be fearful for us. If you consider very few people worldwide get bitten by a shark every year and yet hundreds of thousands of sharks get killed by humans every year. So we are having a massive impact on the world's shark populations and as a result on the fragility of the marine ecosystem. The aim of the tagging research program is to learn more about the movements and behaviour of potentially dangerous sharks in New South Wales waters. The catch and release pr process and the tagging, most importantly, is relatively quick. It's around 15 minutes in total and that's where we insert the uh, internal tag in the abdominal cavity of the shark as well as put the external fin mount tag on the dorsal fin of the shark as well. This process takes a maximum of 15 minutes. They've travelled vast distances in such short periods of time. One animal, a 2.9 metre female, travelled all the way from Ballina nearly to New Zealand and back. In, 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 in weeks, months, this animal is travelling vast distances. The listening stations that are designed to track our tag sharks, when a shark comes within 500 metres of these buoys, it's detected on a hydrophone which instantaneously sends a message to satellite. That satellite message then comes through to DPI Fisheries and we retweet or send via our Shark Smart app to, to the public. It's instantaneous, so through the Shark Smart app and through our tweets, the, the public can follow up along the New South Wales coastline where these sharks are moving. Smart drum lines differ from traditional drum lines in that they have satellite technology which tells us when a shark's being caught. A message is sent, sent immediately to researchers back on shore who get to the shark as quickly as we can, tag the animal and release it. The opportunities that you get from a helicopter are quite unique. Firstly, you get really good vision because the doors are off. You can get photographs of the animals that you're encountering. You can access the people in the water easily. Um, all our helicopters have got a siren and a PA system. So if there is a potentially dangerous situation, those will be activated.
When the helicopter sights a potentially dangerous shark close to people, the most important thing people would know is that the siren will go off and they will be warned through the PA system on the helicopter to please exit the water. Part of our drone trials, we're looking at three things. The capacity of drones to, to fly under any conditions. Can the drone see what a traditional helicopter and observer on board can see? And the capacity of drones to be flown at individual beaches along the New South Wales coastline. So far the drones are really promising and there's no reason why these can't be used for individual beach safety or along our surf beaches along the New South Wales coastline. The great thing about these exclusion devices is that they are a non-entanglement device, so they're not like a normal fishing type net. They're large pieces of plastic with a small aperture or window that prevents animals or large animals moving in and out, but allows small fish and other animals to move through. Personal deterrence are probably the most effective way because people usually surf out on headlands and things like that. So it's not possible to use um, area-based um, technology, for example, putting in a barrier or something like that in those areas. So personal deterrence are going to be the most effective way to go, as well as combined with things like aerial surveillance, using drone technology and things like that. I think it's really important for people to understand that for us in the research team, this work is very close to our hearts. Out of the seven of us, six of us are active surfers. So we are actually stakeholders in this entire game. DPI Helicopter Region 1, Ballina 12. And so obviously one of the other key components of the strategy is enhancing our existing partnerships with life-saving authorities. So Australian Professional Ocean Lifeguards Association, Surf Life Saving New South Wales and Australian Life Saving Services. Now the, the key here and New South Wales Police Marine Area Command of course as well and with local councils. The aim being there is to get a collective message about the best way to keep safe at beaches. The importance of, of working together through a, a complex issue like shark management is, uh, is very, very important. Surf Life Saving's role is we're, we're on the beach you know, between you know, September and, uh, and April. All over summer we, we're a, a, very, um, a brand which is recognised. People think that we, are, we have some sort of authority on the beach, and which, we, which we do. We're you know, a very, an organisation which is well respected. So they come to us for, for advice, and even though we're not experts in, in shark management, it's why we need a, that close relationship. Mm -hmm.